It's Dury Monday, October 16th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented by Jet Home Loans. And now, I'm going to apologize for this early. A guy who believes it's so darn hot in New Orleans lately because, well, there's just no breeze. J.P. Shatrick! Yeah, not, not a great one there. Uh, welcome in. It's Jaguars <laughs> Happy Hour. And the first hour is presented by Jet Home Loans. I'm J.P. Shadrick in the Hyundai Studios at the Miller Electric Center. We're on 1010XL, Jaguars.com, and Jaguars YouTube today. After a Jaguars victory, 37-20 over the Indianapolis Colts, the Jaguars sweep their division rivals and now control the division at 4-2, and two, at least a game ahead of the Texans. The defense playing big again, four takeaways. We'll get a Trevor Lawrence knee injury update, kind of, from the head coach. We'll keep it real in the second hour, of course, and Fanatics fan questions. Let's start today with head coach Doug Peterson this afternoon asked about the status of Trevor Lawrence and that left knee. MRI show for Trevor. Oh, uh, you'd have to talk to Ferg. Yeah, that's, that, that's out of my that realm. How are you strain ligaments or anything like that or bone bruise or what? Yeah, that's out of, out of my jurisdiction. Is there a sense that he may not play Thursday? Um, uh, he's day-to-day. There you have it. Uh, that was the laugh of Tony Baselli, who Sorry. is sitting beside me. I apologize. Me. <laughs> I, 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 I can't help it. That was the greatest, greatest Doug Peterson answer ever. I've ju- loved it. Out of my jurisdiction. I mean, that was so. beautiful. First of all, he handled it perfectly. I don't think he could have answered it better. My favorite is... Yes, you to, my favorite is you, you have to ask Fergie. Who, who's the head trainer who will never have access to the media ever? I was going to say, when was that Mrs. Press Conference that, today? I don't know. Why doesn't he just answer the damn question? No, you don't. I wouldn't answer either because it's Thursday night, short week. You answer only what you have to answer because guess what? Saints are going to figure it out. Why well, give them any information earlier than you have to? I love it. I think awesome. it's awesome. I would have said it. I, I, I literally, if I if I scripted myself, I could not say it better than Doug Peterson just did that. That was awesome. It's I love it. Out of my jurisdiction, but I'm the head coach of the football team, and uh, I have to plan for a game on Thursday. But I don't know if my quarterback's going to be available to me. Are you kidding me? Give me a break. It's absurd. Did, did they? Was anybody in that room laughing? I didn't hear anybody laughing. Come on, Doug. I, I laughed. Yeah, you laugh because it was abs- you know how absurd it is. How is it absurd? Pete, first of all, take he, Okay, he- just say he's day to day. He might get some work today. We don't know the extent of it. It's nothing major. Because they why know if it's anything major? He, didn't they say later on he's going to get half the reps or something or do some work today? Well, guess what? They said they might split if they have to tomorrow. Yeah, they might yeah. split. They don't know. It's a day to day, Pete. Um, I know because as a former beat writer, you can't take that hat off for a second and appreciate how beautiful of a press conference answer that was. By the way. No, I, it's absurd. If anybody who knows anything about the league knows, Tom, Tom knew if you had a hangnail. He, yes, he knows. He knows exactly the extent of that injury. By the way, not long after that, Adam Schefter of ESPN tweeted, an injury update, Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence has what a league source described as a knee sprain that is not a significant thing, but is uncertain whether Lawrence can play Thursday night at New Orleans, and the Jaguars will determine as the week progresses the backup of C.J. Beathard. That's the tweet. It didn't look like it was anything bad, but... Here's what I'd say about that. Doug should worry less about what he says to the media in that situation and about the stupid play call in that situation. What were they doing? Uh, I think stupid is a little Turn bit. Turn the hand the ball off, Tony. Okay, can I, I mean, am I allowed to finish my sentence before well, you, you just yell? Me, so. I never I never interrupted you. This is after a you win, did. by the way, that this is happening, just for the record. <laughs> It's true. It's awesome. <laughs> it's four and two team. It's beautiful. First place. It's starting quarterback. It's the franchise quarterback. I understand that, but I like, yeah, I running it up the middle. Fine. Running a bootleg. Fine. Like whatever. Like I. I mean, okay. Like, would it have been my first choice? No. Am I going to kill Doug and Press for doing it? No. Yeah. No. Yes. Well, first what, of all, how much time was left when he did that? 
Uh, over three minutes. T- yeah, three minutes. Three and change, like three okay. three ten. Hey, you can make the case he shouldn't be in the game. Well, oh, come on, it's two st- two it's score game. Two that score point. game that still you can get, if you if you miss the field goal there. <laughs> and may, okay, don't just think seriously. I mean, he had made two already. But He's if he reliable. misses, he is okay. If you miss the field goal, they get good field position. They go score, get an onside what, what kick, that, go score again. What yard line was that on? Do you give me the play by play for yeah, that? I got you. Twenty. Yeah. It was like the twenty. They were pretty deep. Yeah. I mean, like honestly, this. I mean, to your right. point, Pete. <laughs> so they'll get great field position if he misses the field goal. <laughs> if they. <laughs> If they handed off kicked field goal, it's a 17-point game, right? Which is what it turned out to be after the field goal that and was 51 And there'd be two and a half minutes left. two and a half minutes left in the game, and the game's over. Yeah. And, and like if if they drive three ball. times and There's, beat you without timeouts, then tip your hat and then get on your defensive coordinator. Okay, it's a bad call. There's no defending that call in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It's just a bad football. Call. It's a bad football decision. All okay, right, so stupid they were... might be a little stupid might be a little harsh. <laughs> Brain dead is probably the better one when you it just it's a bad it's a bad decision. You don't put your quarterback into any sort of peril in a game where you don't need to. They were uh, third and seven at the Indy sixteen yard line with three ten to play. <laughs> three turn and hand the ball. And how many timeouts were? It was left? actually third it was third and nine just for the record. It was why. third and seven on the play by play. Thank no, you. That's wrong. And, and how many timeouts did Indy have left? One, two? Uh, I don't know if they had any I left. think they were out. I think they were done. <laughs> that even just gives it more credibility. Tony, I know you, and I know how you think ahead in situations. There's not a chance in hell you would not have turned and hand the ball off and then kicked your field goal and gone home. I, I, I'm not going to kill Doug and press for that call. They were 100 <laughs> And Doug said today, he was, again, looking at it a day later, 100% behind the decision that the quarterback, hey, we could have taken a shorter sack. He could have gone down earlier. Yeah, he could just fall down. You know, and then live to fight another day. That was what he said. Uh, or he could have just, like, been not involved in a play by handing the ball off to, to one of the you, running backs, preferably the backup running back in that situation. You know, two things that I'm going to get off this topic because it's dumb. Um, it's not dumb. Well, it's it the topic to of the season. day. Well, it's I know. The it's, topic. It, there's, it, okay. it is. It's not okay, it's dumb. dumb. It's dumb from this standpoint. He thinks it's a bad call. I think it's a fine call. What I called it, I probably would have handed it off, but whatever. Okay, so it is what it is. The big story is, it will Trevor be healthy enough to play on Thursday night? That's the big story. And then it becomes an even bigger story to make the call if he can't. Pete, the call's in the past. Well, but but you can st- we're, we're here today. We're talking about the game today. And we've already, it's very clear your position of it being stupid, <laughs> brain <laughs> dead, <laughs> whatever <laughs> other adjective you I want. Know. My position, hold, down, my position is. I detect your test. You would agree with me. My if position that, is I probably would have run it. I'm fine with the call, though. <laughs> Tony, do you think that was a good call? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. And so that's like when I say you're right, JP. It's a it was not a dumb topic. It's something we had to address. Yeah, I mean, but it's all, now it's dumb to continue it because we know where Pete is. Now the story is: Will he play? Will he play? <laughs> and then it becomes even bigger. It's a bigger story. It's not. It's certainly not a dumb story. Then if it's he's on the sideline drinking it's not Gatorade, going away. I say this: He will play, and I don't I think, think I don't too. think there'll be any issue. At all with that knee. I don't. I'm with you, Tony. I think he'll play, but again, he shouldn't have been put in that position. But Tony, you've been around knee injuries. You've had some. I know you had some when you had the private plane. They sent you private plane for you and <laughs> in, up in Wisconsin. I know you had a knee injury back then. When you saw that, give me because you've been around the league a long time. You can usually gauge. What did you think that was? What, it didn't look like it was anything major. When I saw it live, I thought he banged his knee on the turf. And then I Correct. saw it in slow motion. It doesn't really hit it. it he kind of – It's a twist. It's a, a slight twist. So yeah. I think he – I mean, tweaked maybe the MCL a little bit. Just tweak. I mean, just maybe just sprained it over in general. Like – like, especially as I get older, like, you ever go, like, play? I'll, I remember I played pickleball, like, a year ago for the first time. And after, like, two days of, like, cutting back and forth, my knee was, like, swollen. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's pickleball. You're not supposed to move. There's no so court. What did, so what did uh, – did, Sh- did Shad send a limo to your house to take you to get no. treatment? No, no, no. No one did that. Anything. I iced it. But my point is, that's what it looked like. But now, the human body is funny. I mean, you we have seen – 
much more innocuous plays, and the injury must is becomes much worse than anyone ever imagined. And but so he was kind of walking around like there well, was he, no problem with it, and Pete, here's, he seemed here's, his spirits didn't seem like he was worried. Here's the most think. telling thing: why he's going to be fine, and why, frankly, I think Doug's press conference was very telling because he was almost mocking the question, and I don't think he would have if it was something serious. And this is the other reason I don't think it's serious is because after the game, he was standing on the sidelines as they were taking a knee. No one around him. And then he proceeded to go walk out and high-five and hug everyone for five minutes, yep. like every Correct. other player. Mm -hmm. And then he proceeded to do an interview with CBS. Mm -hmm. Then he proceeded to walk in casually into the locker room and go do his press conference like any other game. If it was something serious, he's doing none of that. I, I remember I remember when Mark hurt his knee, there were like vigils all over town, remember? Yeah. It was like Well that was a I, mean, I think that was a little bit more serious because there was It was. It yeah. was. But it but the, yeah, I am with you, Tony. I don't I don't think it's serious. It didn't look like it was. He didn't act like it was. What I didn't understand was he said it was bruised after the game. Because man, like it, he went down weird. I can't and I want to see like the TV copy in slow mo. Did his knee bang the turf? I don't remember the, that. Uh, 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 when it was live, that's what it looked like. Like yeah. he went high on hard on his knee, and then Tony did. If he banged the knee and he bruised it, then that's not a big deal. No. But if you have just if you have ligament damage, uh, like uh, or sprain, you wouldn't have a bruise. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you could twist it where you have a bone, a slight bone bruise on the tibia plateau. I've had that too. That's yeah, he does that, hit it. I think if you look at it right here, watch. I don't think it ever hits. I think it just twists. No. It's just kind of a weird twist. It twists. Like, and where's he running anyway? I don't know. He should have thrown it away. Throw the ball well, away. I mean, that's he, my he next. Should been, he should have been running to the bench after they kicked the field goal. <laughs> yeah, which is, goes to my next. This offense only had 233 yards yesterday. That's right. They had a bunch of short fields now. With that takeaways. said, I will never talk bad about an offense that, that got the ball in turnovers and scored. And had 37 points. So at the end of the day, they did their job. Forget about the yards. Yards are – I'd rather have a lot of points and few yards and a lot of yards and few points. Because I've been on the side where you have a bunch of yards and not very many points. Um, and that doesn't work out well. Two things I was, I was thinking about watching the tape today. And kind of thinking through where this offense is after six games. One is my biggest issue with Trevor Lawrence. Biggest issue. He's too damn competitive at times. He tries to do too much. Sometimes you just got to say it's not there and either take a sack or throw it away. And that dude is so competitive. He thinks he's in it. And I mean, and we were very fortunate early in that game because he has a, like a naked or something. It's a throwback. He's trying to throw he yeah, has he pressure. It. And he it like, just like, just like, lunges to the right with his head not even looking and just tries to sling it as he's getting hit to save, try to throw it out of bounds to and save it the sack get out of bounds. and it almost was intercepted it was like a yard short of a defensive end intercepting it i think it was uh uh pay and then we saw it in buffalo where like he is trying after the bad snap trying to find a way to get and almost fumbles it and then another this where he got hurt. I'm not blaming him for getting hurt. The situational football plays over. Like they got it. They read it. Either throw it to the throw it into the crowd. Throw it into the crowd or fall you're outside down. Outside the pocket. Or yeah, fall you're down. Outside the pocket. Like people always use like I think everyone would agree that Tom Brady was one of the most competitive people to ever play the game. Peyton Manning, one of the most competitive people to ever play the game. Go watch them play when they knew it was over and there was nowhere to go. They would fall down. You know, that's a good point that you make about the competitiveness because I think the competitiveness sometimes shows up on his throws. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, and you watch the tape, they had a third and three or thir third and four, I think it was, and he tried to hit that sideline shot to Ridley. Yep. I think that's a play. He had Tank Bigsby in the middle of the field – for what would have been a just check it down, and he's going to run for 12 yards in a first down. Now, that's where the competitiveness, because he could fit. That was an unreal throw to Ridley on the sideline. Oh, the dude is so talented. 
I mean, it is scary how talented he is. And so, but that's but, the little thing. That's the little thing, Tony. Take that check. See, and sometimes we've been critical of him early in the year where he's taken the check down and passed on the on the big throw. So somewhere in between is where he's going to get to, and then it's all going to click. Well, and Pete, like I'm less worried about him trying to make that throw. To your point, I mean, there was an easy pickup, first down to Tank. Okay, I can live with that. Where I get worried because it leads to mistakes is his competitive, like trying to extend plays. And he's the franchise quarterback. He is a stud. I love him, and I love the competitive nature. He needs to learn in certain situations. <laughs> Wasn't there one in the end zone yesterday, too? Like, it was reminiscent of the oh, Houston game last year. He was trying year. to sneak it in there. Right, right. Which, by the way, if Evan doesn't tip it, I think it's a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, that. and that's the other thing. He, they should do, like, a reel of cut-ups of Josh Allen to show how, how you, you – you, 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 if you push it too far, you're going to end up being – it's going to be a problem for you. And so – that's so. That's my and if that's my big criticism of our quarterback, that's a okay. I'm, I can live with that because he's a. I mean, he is so fun to watch. The second thing, and we'll talk about this more because I know we're up against it. Is they need to figure out who else can run the ball besides Etn. Oh boy, he leads the league in attempts, and he's one of the main pass catchers too in this offense. And I worry about over 17 games, him being fresh, ready to go for the stretch and for the playoffs. Um. They're going to have to figure out whether it's Ernest Johnson or Tank Bisbee. Well, I want to talk about the running back position because we have one heck of a one here. But, boy, he's carrying a big load right now. Tony, we'll come back, and we will do just that. Okay. Thank we'll you. talk about the running back game. It's called the tease, All, all the other injuries. Tease. tease. Yeah. Expert tease. Well done. Thank well you. executed. Thank you. Thank fact. you. Thank Very you. competitive of you. Very competitive. Trying to make a play. Me and, all, me and Trevor. That's all you're doing. Me and Trevor. Jags fans want customized Jaguars furniture for your home? Check out ZipChair.com and browse all customizable options. ZipChair furniture for fans. We are off and running. It's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loans. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars. Dreamfinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. Dreamfinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let Dreamfinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamfindersHomes.com for all your move in ready homes and step up your game. Flight by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass. Raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. When it comes to water, choose our team, the winning team. Choose CGC Water Treatment. CGC Water Treatment works, and it works for DG, too. Former Jags QB, David Garrard. If you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Discover the kinetical difference. Call CGC Water Treatment at 844-CGC-JAGS or visit cgcwater.com. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and your local independent Connecticut dealers. Frank Frangie here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at Everbank Stadium because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue, we are the local barbecue joint in bbq Vol for generations of people in Jacksonville. Go to Bono'sBarbecue.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Cancer patients across the Southeast make Baptist MD Anderson Cancer Center in Jacksonville their first choice for treatment. Dr. Jonathan Milquist explains why. We have so many resources that can help a patient from the very onset, and we just have a degree of unity and cohesive care that is hard to match. It's especially with the tougher cancers that we really excel. Appointments available now. Call 844 632 2278. 
Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. Offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit theamaramedspa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. I am disappointed in that I feel like we kind of had some drives where we were had a little lull in our in our offense. So I think that's obviously you never want that to happen, but it's also tough in that in that position. You know, we can do a better job situationally. Like we need first downs, we still need to move the ball, we need to get points. But when you got that big of a lead, you're you're trying to possess the ball, trying to keep it out of their hands, just trying. It's so you're playing a. It's like a balancing act of, you know, do you stay? How aggressive do you stay? All those things, and I think. That's something where we need to be better executing. We were really bad on first down in the, first, in the fourth quarter. So put us in second and long, and then they can kind of do whatever they want. They can, they can drop out, play zone coverage, like make, make you throw it underneath. They can pressure you, um, put you in a tougher position. So I think we've got to be better on first down in those situations. And then, um, you know, I'm never going to be too disappointed in a win, though. It's hard to win in this league, and especially division games. And this is a, that's, a, that's a good team. You know, they're 2-1 in the division coming into today. So it was a big win for us. That's the quarterback, of course, Trevor Lawrence. After the game yesterday, a Jaguars win over the Indianapolis Colts. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on Victory Monday, presented by Jet Home Loans in the first hour on 1010XL AM, Jaguars.com, Jaguars YouTube, J.P. Shadrick, Tony Baselli, Pete Frisco. We've gone through the quarterback part of the offense. There are 10 other guys on the field as well, and a lot of them are banged up right now. Uh, yesterday going into the game, Walker Little, uh, was out of the game, did not play. Yep. Zay Jones was not available. And I don't think either of them will be available for Thursday night if I was a betting man. Okay. That's my um, For entertainment purposes only, of course. Um, and then – Well, I don't gamble, but yes. I know. Well, that's illegal. So, it's illegal in Bushwood. Yeah. I never slice. Never slice. <laughs> um, so, I mean, they're banged up a little bit coming into the game. And then Sheriff gets hurt in the game with an ankle issue. What Did Doug say anything about him today besides day-to-day? Day day. Okay. Day-to-day. We're all day-to-day. Day, As for we? As yeah, for I, He didn't say that. That was only about the quarterback. So, they're dinged up a little bit anyway going in on offense. Um, I don't know. You wanted to talk a little bit about the running game, but it starts up front, right? you got a lot of moving parts up there, guys banged up. Well, but up. yeah, but to be clear, the running game, and I want to let's start there because I think this is, it, it kind of goes in line with your injury um, questions and being beat up more than anything. And Travis is healthy, which is great. Yeah. And playing, I mean, gosh, he's good. He is so good. 113 carries leads the league. He's. Let me just start. And I know Pete and I, when he was drafted, said, well, why would you draft a running back in the first round and blah, blah, blah. And not that I'm for drafting running backs early, but set that aside. He is now one of the most important players on this team and one of the best players on this team. And I did not see this based on the first training camp. Obviously got hurt his, um, in his rookie year and had a great year last year. He's better this year. I mean, he is – Pete, he is the exact back that you that you have talked about for years in this in this era of the NFL. Space back, speed, catch the ball in the backfield. I mean, he is – he's dynamic when he gets the ball in his hands. You know, Tony, I'd love to talk running backs, but that's out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> No, I, look, you know I love the airback. That's what I call him, the airback, the space back, the airback. And, and he – you know what the other thing, too? Somebody said to me the other day, he's not that big. But he's big from the waist down. He's big in terms of his legs. or He can get – you know, he's tough. He runs tough. He's physical. I, and here's one thing I want to say. Okay, I'm giving Doug crap. I want to give Doug and Press some credit. I don't like taking a quarterback and sticking him to the side. You know that. That's, it's, it bothers me a great deal. The design of that play was fantastic, okay? Because they had the action going to the left as if that was going to be a run to the left. And then they pulled guys and came late. The offensive lineman got out 
and led him through the thing. I thought the design of the, all the action, all the action was going that way, and they brought him back. To, look at it; it's all going that way. Then they loop, they loops uh, the tight end back around Ingram, gets the center out, and off he goes. The design of that play was fantastic. So I, you know, I don't like the quarterback lining up left in in the wide receiver position. I never do, no matter who it is. But the, I give him A plus for the design of that play. Well, I thought it was a great timing too because it was sudden change, and so I th- I think they caught the Colts by surprise. Yeah. I mean, they haven't done any wildcat all year. They come out sudden change and they pop this. So I thought it was huge. But my bigger my biggest concern is not that we have a great running back. That's a good problem to have. I mean, and we have a great running back. We have a bell cow. We have a guy that like you better game plan for Travis Etienne because he is that type of player. I worry about the number of care, touches because he has 113 or 18? 113. 113. How many catches does he have, JP? Uh, he's got 20-something catches. It is, um, it is. I got it right here, in uh, 21 catches. It's fourth on the team. So 21 catches. So on 24 targets, by the way. 21 catches. So that's 134, right? Yep. 134, and they've played six games. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's uh, – 134 divided by six people. That's 22. If you times that by 17, that's 379, 380 if you round up because 379.66, 380 touches on the year. It's too that, many. That is it's a, a ton. And so, it used to be, oh, well, that's fine, but not anymore. No, it's too many. It's too many especially, I mean, like – you need this guy down the stretch, and he's not built like Derrick Henry. I mean, I agree. Well, you but, drafted one in the third round. You should be able to get some. Well, get Pete, him that, going that's my point. Him. They have to get either Tank Bigsby or Dearness Johnson going, and they have to be able to trust him enough to get those guys carries to take some of the load off of Etn. What was his carry yesterday? He how many Bigsby get yesterday? Uh, Bigsby had three carries for two yards yesterday. Etn eighteen for fifty five. A lot of that though, the bulk of the yardage was in the first half. They were shut. There was down. another. There was another run too. What was that one? Uh, Dearness Johnson Dearness had one a, for nineteen. One for nineteen. That yeah. was that, that one. I think there was nobody there when he took no. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but it, yeah, it was not a great Tony. day. They, got, they have to get those guys have to get more work. They got to get more work because I I mean. I, you want Etienne at his best down the stretch because he's such an important part of this team. And you want him to be able to, when, when the games matter, which they matter now, but like you get December, you're trying to win a division, trying to get a home field, you know, a playoff game, everything else like that. And then you get into the playoffs and then you want everyone rolling. I mean, that's where you give them 35 touches a game. And, and when you, you need it, right? You when need you need them. In games like, and like, here's a, like a perfect example. You had a big lead going into half and coming out of half. And that game was really never in question. If you I mean in, in the second half. Yeah. That those are the situations I would have liked to see Doug and Press say, okay, let's limit ETN's touches the second half. Let's like we have a freebie here. We have a Thursday night game coming up. Let's rest them. Let's run tank and De Ernest and get them well, a bunch of touches. Well, when he the play before he was sacked, he got a touch. The play before Trevor Lawrence was sacked and got hurt, ETN got the touch before that. That's my point. I would not have had him in there in the second no, half. No, neither point. one of them should have been in there in that situation. No, but Pete, I would even have limited it more, and I don't know how many touches he had in the second half. Um, I, as a team, they had 12 rushes in the second half. Let me altogether. correct myself. They had the ball at the 19. They went ETN for seven penalty for the false start then etn for one then the sack for the injury neither one of them should have been in the game at that spot ETN, neither one of them etn in the second half had seven carries for three yards and how many uh, catches do you know uh etn in the uh, first half uh did not have any catches in the second half and for the game he had three so that's 10 touches in the second half mm-hmm. i could argue that he having Two to three would have been plenty. Like I don't think that game is any different based on he only had three yards rushing. Anyways, is if you go run Dearness, you have a you have a three you have a three possession lead. 
Go run Dearness. Go run Tank. Be good for Tank to get reps. I mean, I'm being hypercritical here, yeah. no doubt about it. Right. But it's more looking at the long view. Right. Of you got to look at the big picture. Travis is getting a bunch of touches right now. How do you limit those? Because in big moments, you're going to need them against the Saints. It's a good defense. It's a good football team. Not great offensively, mm-hmm. but good defense. So you're going to need him. Steelers, another great defense. You know that's going to be physical. And then you get a bye. Then you got the 49ers, the most, maybe the most physical team in the NFL. So you have like you have three physical games coming up. Now buy is built in there. That's nice. And you got to. Uh, uh, and you kind of get the mini buy after this week, right? Uh, absolutely. But my whole point is, you have a running back who is a stud, and I think you and he's leading the NFL in attempts. And my guess is probably one of the top guys on total touches as well. So how do you? You have to find moments during the season where either you have a big lead and you limit, or like the game's over, or what, whatever. The, but you got to find those times, and I think Tank and the Ernest are going to have to step up and get more carries. Travis, I would agree. I agree with you one hundred percent. They, I mean, you drafted one of those guys in the third round with the idea he was going to help take some of those carries away, and and I think the Ernest has showed a little pop when he goes into the game. So. I mean, yeah, um, but they shouldn't. They should get ten to twelve, thirteen touches between the two of them. Well, it depends on the flow of the game, too, Pete. As you right. know, yeah, right, yeah. Like yesterday, they weren't getting them, but normally they should. Yeah, but yesterday, give them ten t- total, and take well, ten in the second half. In the second yeah. half, like give them majority of the touches in the second half. Plenty ahead. We we got to get to defense. They well, had, had a day yesterday. Great too. day, and we probably should spend because I kind of waylaid the segment. Of talking about the injuries because that's going to be a big story we've, on Thursday. We've got a lot of time to get to that. We got a lot of stuff to cover, JP. There's a lot there. happening for this four and two football team, first place in the AFC South. We'll get to the division uh, rankings and uh, the, yeah, the power rankings, the all important AFC South power rankings. Well, let me tell you who's won. It's the team with the best record. That's not a great tease. I'm just telling you. Sign up your furry friend for the Jaguars' official four-legged fan club for pets presented by Forever Vets Animal Hospital. Your pet will receive access to exclusive merchandise, events, and sweepstakes throughout the 2023 season. Visit jaguars.com slash promotions slash four-legged fan club to sign up today. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loan. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. Are you ready to elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans? Citrus Distillers, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is excited to announce the 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Now available at Total Wine and other participating retailers. Elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans. The 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Duval! The kick is up. It's good! Score winning sub deals this Jaguars regular season at Firehouse Subs. Get two medium subs for just $10 after any game with the Jaguars kick a field goal of 40 yards or more. It's a bold deal for the bold city. Sign up at firehousesubs.com slash field goals for Firehouse for offer details and to automatically receive this offer when you use your Firehouse Subs rewards account. Redeemable only at participating Jacksonville and Orlando area restaurants. Only available on the Firehouse Subs app and online ordering. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. 
Hey, Jax fans, stop dreaming of creating your game day fan cave and build the Jaguars' den of your dreams with ZipChair. When it comes to maximum comfort, ZipChair.com is the only place for officially licensed Jaguars recliners, sofas, bar stools, office, and gaming chairs, all featuring high-quality imported Jags logos. Crack open a few cold ones in the comfort of a zip chair and make your home the place to be on game day. Head over to zipchair.com and save 20% today. Use code JAGSRADIO at checkout. Zipchair.com, furniture for fans. Daily's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily Stash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's our identity. Everybody comes from a turnover background. When you look at guys' college careers and stuff, we got guys that fly around. You know, Foyer, Devin, they, they both got turnover backgrounds. So that's who we are. Um, and then so Josh Gannon started from there. QB's in the pocket. He's worried about that. And he throws balls up that we could intercept. It's Andre Sisco, one of four takeaways for the Jaguars defense yesterday. And welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Pete Prisco, Tony Baselli. We're at the Hyundai Studios at the Miller Electric Center. Tony and I are... Pete's yes, down we in are. South Florida. We're on 1010XL AM, Jaguars.com, Jaguars YouTube. That's uh, Andre Sisco. Part of a defense now that leads the league in takeaways. 15 of them for the season. Eight interceptions, seven fumble recoveries. The Jets and the Bills are tied for second, and then three other teams are tied for fourth with 11. Uh, Jets and Bills each have 13 takeaways. So the Jaguars are getting it done in the takeaway game. Uh, and a lot, big reason why, Pete, is this, they're third in the league against the run. And then that sets up uh, throwing the football. And um, they've, they've been fortunate enough and um, playing well enough to get their hands on some footballs this year on the back end and then force some takeaways on, on the fumbles as well. They've ex- overachieved, I think, if you look at it on the, in the big picture. And we talked a little bit about what Mike Caldwell's done a nice job with that group. But what are they, 15th in scoring defense, which, again – before the season, if we said they could get to 10, remember that, Tony? If they get to the 10 to 12 range, that they'd have a legitimate chance to even win the whole thing. So I think they've done a great job. I, I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I'm a little surprised at how well they've played. But we, the other part of the equation is this. We talked about guys taking the next step. Tyson Campbell has taken the next step. Mm-hmm. Andre Sisco certainly has taken the next step. There were some really good things shown out there, by the way, yesterday from Devin Lloyd for the first time, I thought, in a long time. Um, you know, Trayvon Walker has two and a half sacks. He had, you know, he's played good football. He's just not a great pass rusher. But you add that all up, and I think that's why you're seeing the growth of that defense. And Aluakon was out. I, I watched the tape this morning. I thought Aluakon was outstanding on Sunday. 15 tackles, 10 solos. He's he's good every yeah. week. Every week he's good. Um, Pete, I like how you said it. Guys improving. And I think the defense is – there's a couple things that jump out of me at watching. You know, Josh Allen, I mean, he's seven sacks now. Fourth fumble. That was a clean sack yesterday. He had a number. Should be, should be tied for the league league because they took that one away from him. He should have nine. Um, and he had pressure several times, pushing the guy back in the lap. Um, Is he a game wrecker yet? He's he's proceeding towards that. Like, I, like for me personally, game wreckers We've talked about this. are the guys you lose sleep over the night before. Max Crosby. Game record. You know, Aaron Donald, that is, you know. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. TJ Von Walker. Miller in his prime. Yeah, Von Miller, not anymore. But, uh, but I don't know. I, I don't know if I put Josh in that category yet. But he's trending. And he is, like, really, really good. And is a, like, he's the guy that can rush the passer right now. I think. This is the best he's played at any point in his career. By yeah, the way. he's he looks great. Even down the stretch last year when yes. he was flashing. Yes, and, yes, okay. yes. Wow. Um, I thought Trayvon had nice rushes yesterday. I did too. Um, and he should have because the, the the rookie he's playing against is shouldn't be out there right now. I mean, he's I think he has a chance to be a good player, but he's young. Only played a couple games, um, and is a little light, 
you know, a little, uh, little light as far as being able to sit down power. And, and Trayvon did what he's supposed to. He got pushed, did a good job. You know what else Trayvon does, Tony? He he plays hard and, like, chases down plays. Oh, no. Not... He's, a, he's a really good football player, Pete. He chased down a run. I think it was a run player or a pass to the a yeah. quick screen to the outside and made a play on it. He's, he, he plays hard. He recovered that fumble last week at the end of the game. Very where he good. Was playing. He plays hard. I think Cisco's a heck of a safety. Heck of a safety. Um, obviously, Tyson, he was good last year. Um, Rayshon had a really good game. He's all over the place making tackles. We talked about Lua Khan. I agree with Pete. I thought it was Devin Lloyd's best NFL game. Best game he's played. All around the ball. Um, if He didn't. He have looked a, fast, Tony. For the he, first time, you looked at it and you go, he's fast. If he didn't have a ca- cast on his hand, he would have had two picks because he has good hands and he's proven that in the past. Um, with all that said, the best thing this defense does because I mean Roy, 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 I'm leaving guys out Roy Roberts Harrison great you know he, Roy Roberts and Harris beats up on Quentin Nelson yeah every time he did it again <laughs> I don't I don't sometimes he must be like that you know you have that one kid in school like he must be that one kid in school no matter when they play he's going to just going to beat him up cuz Quentin Nelson's usually he's not as good as he used to be but Roy Roberts and Harris pushes him into the backfield yeah. you know? it's amazing. he was good I thought Fadakasi was good yesterday I mean so the whole unit but that's not the best thing to do like Josh being on, you know, whether you want to say he's a game record or not, he's right. I mean, he's good. He's playing great football. He's making himself a lot of money. And he, I, I hope he continues. I hope he gets 18 sacks and just breaks the bank. Um, and so, but the best thing is none of those things. It's not a Lua Khan or any of it. The best what thing, is it, Tony? I best, can't wait. The best longer. thing is, is this group plays great team defense. And that's why they get their hands on so many balls. And they are – in the last three weeks, they have been a great tackling team. Go look at the yards after catch. They're minimal. They come up. They're playing more zone. I give Caldwell all the credit in the world. He understands what his guys can do, where they excel. They're looking at the quarterback a lot. They, and they come up and they tackle. Guys are stopped where they catch the ball. And, and you play defense, good team defense, good communication, and you tackle well. You're going to be a good defense. Now, you might not be top five. Don't need to be top five to win it all. You don't no. need to be top five to get into the playoffs and make noise. If you're a solid defense who comes up and tackles, communicates, plays good team, get your hands on the ball. No big plays over the top. Keep, limit the, yeah. the splash plays. Mm-hmm. You're, going to be, you're going to be in every game. And that's what this team has done five of the six games. Against the Texans, well, okay, can, against the Texans, they were te- they just didn't communicate. They didn't tackle. They were bad everywhere. We can say this, Tony, with one hundred percent certainty: the defense has played better than what we expected, while the offense has played a little bit worse than I expected. I would say, I yeah, I think that's fair. I would I would say it a little different. I said the, the, to me, the defense is overachieved based on what I was projecting. And the offense has underachieved based on what I was expecting. Because I expected this to be a high flying, just breaking the scoreboard well, type of offense. They did too. Me too. And they're Me not too. and they're not there yet. They were looking at and 30 yet a they game. St- and yet they've scored thirty in two games in large part because of the defense, but yeah. they have. Yeah, no, no, no. And I'm not saying it's not a good offense. It's not the offense I thought it was gonna be. It's not no, it's not. I thought it would be a high flying aerial attack. Where Trevor's throwing two or three touchdown passes and lighting it up, and it hasn't been that at all. And and maybe you know, it, I think that has a chance to come. If that gets to that point, and this defense is playing like this, they're going to be a deep playoff team. Yeah, Pete, I'll say this: if they they've played three straight games where they've played really good complementary team football, like they you know they played so really good like. Yes. Special teams, offense does their job, defense, defense gets stops, offense responds, so on and so forth. If they would have played like that in the two games they lost, they, they beat both those teams by – no. I mean, I'm not saying easy, but they beat both those teams, and they're undefeated. I mean, that's – to Pete's point, if they continue to play this type of defense and just approve a little bit on offense, just a little, it's one of the best teams in the AFC. 
You know, Dwayne Smoot actually did some things on I Sunday. I was going to get to like, that, Pete. Hey, by the way, uh, Pete, it's Dewan Smoot. Dewan Smoot. Not Dwayne. Dewan Smoot. Dewan. He's, only Dewan been, Smoot. he's only been here six years, Pete. Thanks for getting that. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's embarrassing. No, Dewan Smoot. How did he play? I was thinking about game record. That's why it got me all worked up. I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I thought Dewan played well. Yeah. Um, and he's going to only get better. He was not back to the level he was before he got hurt last year where he was playing really good football. Um, but he played good. He had a nice tackle for a loss. They didn't it, put him inside much, though. A little bit. But here's what he yeah. does, Pete, if you watch him. He it, played 32 snaps yesterday. Yeah, he did a good job. A he lot. played more than yeah. I thought he was going to. Right. He finds a way to get on the edge of guys. And I think it's it, it, was, a li- it was a little bit late at times. First game back, I mean, trying to feel his way through it. I mean, coming after a major injury like an Achilles. I think that's only going to get better because that's what he did so well last year. He's always on the edge and because he's not like an elite athlete as far as professional athletes. I mean, everyday people, he's elite. Sure. But he, it's not like he's like super like off the charts strong or he's off not, the cha- charts quick or off the charts fast. He's or, not massive either like some of those guys a, up yeah, front. Not a big. huge man. Yeah. But he is one of those guys, and I played against a lot of these guys, where – He's just so slippery. He's always on the edge, and he's always like you just feel like you can't square him up exactly all the time. How, yeah. how big is he? What's he listed at? Let's see. The official he's, height, he, weight. He's not De- taller than 6'3", I promise you that. Um, no, he's got to oh, be 6'2", or 6'. Yeah. What does it say, Hang JP? On. Uh, he wasn't on the flip card because he was elevated before the game. Hang on. Let me look I bet he's 6'2", and 265. No, I, I bet you they have him at 6'3", Pete. Let's see here. The official. Uh, what's the official guesses here? What I got. Si- I got six three two six. Well, they'll give him an inch. So yeah, six, six three two sixty three two seventy five. What are you saying, Pete? Two seventy five. He is officially six three two seventy five on Jaguars dot com. Okay. What was he, he's built like you, Douglas? He's a little taller, but remember not, how you yeah, Douglas but, was a square, squatty guy. Yeah, like but that he, Hugh Douglas was bigger as far as legs and rear end. Yeah. Remember Hugh Douglas, like not a huge upper body, but his bottom half was like yeah. He looked like he was a three hundred and fifty pound man. I mean, just powerful. <laughs> but I, I know the guy, the kind of guys you're talking about. That the, the guy you look at him and you go, boy, he's a sneaky off the edge, and you don't you don't know why. You know who right? you know who was like that former Jag, Paul Spicer. Yeah. yeah. Spice, like he just like like I remember practicing against Spice. I only practiced against them and. Like you look at him, it's like, oh gosh, this is not it'd be easy. But like he was always on the edge, and you're always having to work, and he's never stopping. He's always fighting your hands, and he's grabbing a shoulder, and he's like, right. he's just like, on right. the, it's like, and that's he reminds Dwan Smoot reminds me of that. I mean, he's just a good football player. By and the I, way, didn't, I think he's uh, only going to get better. Didn't Chase on have a sack yesterday? He did. Uh, Yes, he did. Look at look at Tony. He did. Well, yeah, he, he actually chased him down. He looked like he was fast on that play. Well, Chase on is fast. No, I know, but I mean, he played fast, like a pass rusher. In a fast. straight line, he is fast. He like why, Pete, like, well, like that? why were you going like this? Then I, I was that? not doing that. My point is, <laughs> if you watch Chase on his special teams, he's fast. I I'm, I know he's fast. He's not, but he I don't think he's fast a cha- rushing the pass. I don't think he's a, a fast change of direction guy, or flip your hips, or bend the corner, or pass rush move guy. W- w- was Abdullah inactive yesterday? He was. Yes. yes. Yeah. No, but Chase on again another solid like like on your fifty three man roster like everyone's the only reason Chase on gets so much criticism is because he was a first round pick. Oh, that's right. Yeah. If like you took right. if you wiped away where he was drafted, you're like yeah, part of our fifty three man. It's a, he's a good. Good football player. We've got to go to break. We'll come back in a moment. AFC South um, overview from yesterday. If you're we're, looking for the, we're way late. Gosh, we're late. Oh, I mean, I've been waving this piece of paper for like three we, minutes. You are so late. You are doing a terrible job of leading the show. Will today. you stop talking wow. so I can read this commercial? If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150, loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between. This truck makes tough look easy. Your local Ford dealer, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. little chippy today. It's Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by Jet Home Loan. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, 
We're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. Dreamfinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let Dreamfinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit dreamfindershomes.com for all your move in ready homes and step up your game. Frank Frangie here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at Everbank Stadium because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue, we are the local barbecue joint in bbq for generations of people in Jacksonville. Go to Bono'sBarbecue.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Tackle your marketing needs with Kessler Creative. Providing direct mail services for more than a decade, Kessler has a wide range of services from small mailers to large banners and signs. Draft Kessler as your first pick to receive the best targeted mail list. Elevate your business and be on the winning team with Kessler Creative. Kessler Creative. Results-driven marketing and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing MyGate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gate's frequent shopper clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the MyGate Rewards app in the App Store today or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to gate. It's time for sunshine and summer showers, so it's more important than ever to make sure you call Crystal Clean for all your waterproofing needs. Waterproofing can extend the life of your building by keeping water outside where it belongs. And that Florida sun can beat up your business's paint job. Crystal Clean's painting services can bring your building back to life. From waterproofing to painting, schedule Crystal Clean today. Call 904-220-3337 or go to crystalclean.com. You don't have to worry when it's Crystal Clean. As the official supermarket of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Publix is helping fans gear up for game day with the limited time Jaguars sub. Piled high with hot deli chicken tenders, boar's head bacon, cheddar cheese, coleslaw, and barbecue mayonnaise on a white sub roll. The Jaguars sub is an easy, delicious meal for any fan. Make it an ultimate game day by ordering the Jaguars sub online for in-store pickup. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Man, I get paid to play football. All I do is take care of my body and play football. So I feel like I got to continue to keep doing what I've been doing. And, um, I mean, as a running back, as a guy, you, you want that. You know, you want that. I feel like this is why I play the game, uh, to get those touches. So I just got to just lock in and just continue to do what I've been doing to stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. It's Travis Etienne Jr. after the game yesterday. Quit taking those touches away from him, Tony. He wants them. He's ready. He's built for it, he said. Jaguars happy hour. First of all, you, name a player or running back who's said something different ever. I'm just telling you. I mean, if you tur- start turning down carries, you might not get them back. Yeah, the only thing that would be more surprising is a receiver said he's not open. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, on Tuesday, October 24th from 5 to 6, that's coming up next week, head to the Publix at E-Town Exchange and meet Jaguars players for a special appearance. That's 11025 E-Town Parkway in Jacksonville. That's down near 9B, just below 295. On Tuesday, October 24th, 5 to 6 p.m., members of the Jaguars will be there. AFC South, Ravens over the Titans yesterday, 24-16. The Texans beat the Saints, 20-13. to We know what the Jaguars did to the Colts. So now the Jaguars are 4-2. and two. They're in first place in the AFC South. Houston at... Uh, oh, Indy at three and three, two and two in the division. Houston three and three, one and one in the division. Tennessee two and four, zero oh and one in the division. Those are the rankings. Do the power rankings on Jaguars Happy Hour reflect those? Pete, we'll start with you. Yes, I think it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I would think Jacksonville Texans. Colts, Titans, and that's the Colts with Minshew. Okay, 
That, there he's you go. bad. The quarterback play. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't play well yesterday. No. <laughs> I mean, he's lucky he didn't have at least four more passes, Big Dolph. He was terrible. 33 of 55 passing, 329 touchdown, three picks for Minshew. And yeah. about 200 of that was garbage time. I don't remember him being that bad. Yeah, because you were hopeful. <laughs> I just remember whenever he tried to push it down the field, he didn't have the arm to do that. He, there are people around the league that actually believe that guy should be starting quarterback in the NFL. That's ridiculous. Well, he's going to be starting for a while there. He might be starting all year. Is it there's really that bad, Derek? Be, his... There's talk Richardson could be gone for the year. Wow. Tony, uh, power rankings, please, quickly. I'm going to go uh, Jags. Texans, Colts. I actually, actually, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go Jags, Texans, Titans, Colts with Minshew. Colts are <laughs> last in the division because of Minshew. Well, I, mean, I don't I, know the tit- the Titans are pretty bad and their quarterbacks hurt. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Colts Titans. I forgot about the injury. <laughs> yes, could to be Tannehill. a shifting division quarterback uh, yeah. thing with Tony, all these injuries. The, um, the offensive line of the Tennessee Titans is so bad; it's unbelievable. They are so bad. How bad are they? I mean, the center is about 275 pounds and can't play. They bench the left tackle. He stinks. Um, they have all kinds of issues. If the Jaguars can't win against the Titans this year, then they may – I'm talking about sweeping them. They may never sweep We them. swept them last year like I told you we would. Did you get both games? That's yes. Like, get... I locked it that we'd sweep them. By and the way, we, we had a double lock last double week. Double lock. Double lock is back. We'll is see double if double lock this week? Ooh, Ooh. I don't think so. Ooh. No. Ooh. We'll see. We're going to have to play with this one. We've got another hour to figure it out. The second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour is coming up. We'll keep it real. The Fanatics fan questions and much more. This is Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loans. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. Offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit theamaramedspa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. The 2023 season is possum. <coughs> Introducing the Four-Legged Fan Club, the Jaguars' official fan club for pets. Presented by Forever Vets Animal Hospital, your furry friend can access exclusive merchandise, events, and sweepstakes throughout the season. Fan club members will be automatically entered to win the Pet of the Game sweepstakes with two Jack tickets and sideline passes for pet owners and a chance for your pet to be featured on the video boards as Pet of the Game. <coughs> Visit jaguars.com slash promotions slash four-legged fan club to sign Sign up. Brooks Rehabilitation has more than 50 years of experience serving the North Florida community with cutting-edge rehabilitation care, ranging from joint replacements, sports injuries, and balance issues to traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, and strokes. Their highly trained clinical teams span across their system of care to include inpatient, outpatient, skilled nursing, assisted living and memory care, home health, and adaptive community programs. Learn more at brooksrehab.org. Brooks is proud to be the rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wars. Tailored all here for Renewal by Anderson. Upgrade your home with a winning combination of style and performance. For a limited time, get 20% off of every window, 20% off all patio doors, and 20% off of installation. Plus, no money down, no payments, and no interest for 18 months. 
Offer expires October 31st. Restrictions apply. Renewal by Anderson, proud to be the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Visit rbafla.com. License number CGC 1527613. Ever wish you could make your Mondays go a little smoother? Here's a pro tip. Order online to dodge the line and kick off your week with free coffee Mondays. Every Monday through October 30th, Dunkin' Rewards members can get a free medium hot or iced coffee with any purchase. And you get to earn points to spend on even more free Dunkin'. Not a member? Join Dunkin' Rewards on the app and get even more Dunkin' deals. Nothing beats Dunkin' Rewards. Jaguars run on Dunkin'. Limit one per member per Monday. Additional charges and terms may apply. Exclusions may apply. Participation may vary. Limited time off. The time off. You know, you still want to have the element of surprise going into the game, things that maybe haven't shown on tape. But listen, you're also going into a place where, regardless if it's a Thursday night or a Sunday or a Monday night or a Sunday night game, you're going into a place that's extremely loud. And so communication is, is hard and, and snap counts are hard. And so the more you can simplify motions and shifts and, you know, just line up in stagnant formations, you know, um, can help you. Um, but at the same time, you still want to, you know, put your guys in positions to, to you know, have successful matchups or at least, you know, have some success on the field. That's the head coach, Doug Peterson, earlier today. And welcome back. It's the second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Vaselli, Pete Prisco. After a Jaguars win yesterday over the Colts, 37-20, third straight victory for the Jags, the defense led the way again. Four takeaways, including three interceptions. And now the Jaguars lead the league in takeaways with 15. The Jags' offense only gained 233 total yards, but they had short fields and scored 17 points off those four takeaways. ETN added two more rushing scores early, but was quiet in the second half of the game. And the Trevor Lawrence knee injury scared the heck out of everybody at 3.04 in the fourth quarter. He rolled left on the third down, was sacked, twisted the left knee, and the head coach, of course, today said he's day-to-day. And now it's a short week. On to the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans for Thursday night football against the 3-3 three and three New Orleans Saints. Uh, this hour presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings. And tonight they have brought us some Chubby-style wings and some quesadillas with, I think, chicken and mushrooms. What kind of flavor are the wings? They are a, a secret seasoning. Secret seasoning. Chubby secret style. seasoning. Yeah. It's kind of like, kind of like uh, secret injury for the quarterback. Oh. It's not his jurisdiction, Pete. <laughs> We're all day today. Aren't We're we? all day today. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, listen. Thursday night in New Orleans is tough. Let's get in a little more into this injury stuff. We talked about the quarterback earlier in the first hour. Obviously, there's a number of players that are on this list, and they have put out an injury report today. Let's go through it. The Jaguars conducted a walkthrough today, officially. Yes. It was closed to the media. But this injury report is an estimation as if the team held a full practice. Are you ready? Yes, ready. Full today, Devon Hamilton, defensive tackle with a back injury. We'll see how he progresses. He sounds like he's pretty. He sounds like he's pretty close. So he talked to the media in the locker room last week. So yes, it does kind of feel that way. The rest of the players did not practice today. Tyson Campbell with a hamstring injury, and Doug Peterson said today he might not go Thursday. I will. I don't. There's no chance he's playing. I mean, I watched the tape this morning. He clearly grabs a hamstring as he's running. Um, as he's On special trying to, teams, right? Yeah, it was a punt safe. I mean, defense. Every league, every team across the league has a defense out there and punt safe. And he was just running, not even full speed, and he grabs that hamstring. So I, mm. short week. Like I, it's not worth the risk because if he tried to push it in a short week, and you make it worse, now you're out four to six. Like well, they just, signed a corner. They signed a corner today too. Yeah, so that's he, he, he's not going to play. Yeah, he's out. Okay, uh, you have ruled him out. Coach Baselli has Coach ruled Baselli, him out. It's not my jurisdiction way, to do the, other, the, the kid who went this. in there didn't play very well. Monteric Brown, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, second year out of Arkansas. Uh, all right, one other um, – oh, the rest are on offense. Uh, Zay Jones did not practice today, knee injury. I'd be surprised if he goes. Walker Little did not practice today. Be shocked if he goes. Knee injury. Brandon Sheriff, ankle injury in the game, left the game, did not practice today. 
He is a tough is, dude. I, I bet you he tries. It'll be interesting to see if they let him. Is that the same ankle that he hurt in? Um, Unclear. In Unclear, Pete. Is that Indy? The last time he played Indy? Is that when that happened? Pretty early, I think. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, Trevor Lawrence with a knee injury did not practice today. I think he plays. I day think to he day. plays too. Day to day. We're all day to day. I'm just saying, I think. I know nothing. It's out of my jurisdiction to quote the uh, head coach, which I love that press conference. I'm a big fan of that press conference. Let's hear that again, by yeah. the way. Can we, we, do we, that? we heard from Doug Peterson you know, earlier today. Why are today. you playing that? Because it's great. It's great radio. It. Doug Peterson asked today in his press conference – about the status of Trevor Lawrence this week in that left knee. The MRI show for Trevor. Uh, you'd have to talk to Ferg. Yeah, that's that, that's out of my uh, realm. Tell you strain ligaments or anything like that, or bone bruise or what? Yeah, that's out of out of my jurisdiction. Is there a sense that he may not play Thursday? Um, uh, he's day to day. God bless Mike Duraco. He's <laughs> just giving it a go there and getting nothing out of him. Hey, just so everyone, hold on, Pete. Pete, Pete hold on. Hold on. Just so everyone listening, and then I'll let you go, Pete. Ferg is the head athletic trainer for the Jaguars. Just go ahead, Pete. Okay. Somebody in that room should have gone, time out. Doug, you're the head coach of this football team, and that's out of your jurisdiction? I mean – it looks foolish to say that. He 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 looks foolish saying that. Just say you don't know. We haven't had the, we haven't got all the information yet. I mean, it's out of my jurisdiction. The entire building's in your jurisdiction. That's it. You good, Pete? On that one. Well, you, cause, cause Tony's he's, he's getting so quiet over there because he knows I'm right. No, I I disagree with you. I love the answer. No, I'm not changing no, my position. Don't. No, you don't. You just don't want to say it. How could you're afraid I mean, of repercussions? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously we've gone through the whole scenario, the play call, and everything that went into it. That's happened. Now the question is moving ahead. If he doesn't go, C.J. Beathard is the quarterback. What does yeah, he have? Twelve well starts. Just, yeah, that ain't, they aren't winning with C.J. Beathard. Why not, Pete? There's some other backups in the league that won yesterday. Yeah, you know who won yesterday? Who? P.J. Walker won against the 49ers because their defense has given up the least amount of yards since 1970 <laughs> in five games. That defense is nasty. Yeah, Jacksonville's the, defense is better. It ain't nasty. Yeah, the Browns' defense is really good. Woo! Really good. Mm. Think about that. The least amount of yards since 1970. Who are they on the points? Because that's more important. I, I gotta look I and bet see they're where they're close. And, and yeah, you're, 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 I mean they're you're really yards, good. You're probably not getting points. But now, either. if Jacksonville's defense were able to play to that level, then you could win with with CJ Beathard. So we'll see. We'll see what happens at the quarterback spot. The um, Jaguars running back Travis Etienne leads the league in carries. We talked through that tonight. And um, Tony, we didn't talk about the offensive line yet. Yeah, what's up? so? There's injuries there. How did Hans play at right guard when he came in? This, let me see what Tony, if Tony agrees with me. I thought both tackles played really well in protection. Now, yeah. they're, not, they're, exact, they're not exactly playing Mathis and Freeney. Um, I thought Shatley was a little bit better this week than he's been. Not, I mean, Fortner had a couple plays where you go, God, what are you doing? And Sheriff, when he was in there, played okay. But then once he went out, Hans was okay. Would you agree, Tony? Yeah, I thought he. I thought he came in and did a a, a good job. What did you think of the tackles? I didn't think they were good in the run game, but they were pretty solid in pass protection. Yeah, I thought protection was not an issue from either tackle at all. I and I thought I thought the interior three did a better job of handling those two big defensive tackles in the past. They game. did in the first, in week one. They destroyed them. Now, Buckner. It was getting trapped on one play and blew one up. No, that was Stewart. Richard. That was Stewart. Yeah. Was that Stewart? Oh, Stewart was getting – yeah, he just, he blew the play up. But for the most part, they were – those two were wrecking the game in week one for a while. Yeah, and they did and not – they, they didn't did, do that. No, week. I didn't think so. We're, our run game still was not great. I think that – you know, I think that Colts is a team's a pretty good defense, Pete. Those two young corners they have – 
especially they're gonna that, be good. Especially that second rounder, the Juju Brent kid. Brent's from Kansas State, yeah. He's a good player, man. They're they lack the dynamic pass rusher. That's the from the edge. That's the problem. But they're solid. They got the, the uh, linebackers Z- can all fly. Zaire Franklin is a stud. They can fly. Speed played good yesterday. Speed's can he can fly. They're good. They're. I mean, that's not. I mean, that's a. That's. I mean, they gave up thirty-seven points, but you know they were put in terrible situations. So we were not great offensively as far as running the ball. I mean, you look at the numbers. Yeah, second half especially. Yeah, second half we could not get it going. I. I was a little surprised. Like if I was going to be critical of anything, I know Pete can't get off the last play. Um, the only th- the only thing going back, I, I thought it was weird watching it live, and then watching the tape again. They're up 21-6 at halftime. Is that right? Did I get that right? Seems right. Yeah, they got late. The Colts got a late field, late field goal. That's right. 21-6. 21-6, correct. Totally. We, we get the ball coming out, and we throw it. We go throw, 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 punt. Like up 21-6. Uh, yeah, incomplete maybe, short right. Maybe it's me, just the offensive lineman. Like, come out and like, let's run the ball a little bit. Let's incomplete get, let's get short it going. Because they ran the ball decent in the first half. Incomplete deep right to Kirk. Punt. It just seemed very clunky in the second half. It, it, yeah, it wasn't. There's, it's hard to get into a rhythm when you're getting point blank stuff, scoring, and sure. then you don't really have to drive the football. Like, because JP has JP. Do you have the yards by half? Like, I'd be curious with the two thirty three. What they have in the first half compared to the second half? Give me just a moment, Tony. I can get that. The crack research staff here can do that for you. The first half total yardage for the Jacksonville Jaguars one seventy two. Yeah, so one seventy two of two thirty three. That's easy math. Twenty eight. That's fifty three. That's fifty one. Uh, no, sixty one uh, yards in the second half. Compared to 174 in the front in the first half. 72. 72 yeah. in the first mm-hmm. half. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And so the, the it's almost it's almost like you got that lead and then it was like they went three and out. Then when did they get the ball back again in the second half? It was by that time it was they got it back pretty quick. The defense got off. Right. Um, it was more of I definitely felt it calling the game, or at least. My sense was there was a lull there in the second half, especially on the offensive side. And they said as much. I think the quarterback said that. Yeah, just like it was like kind of like going through the motions almost. You know, I will say this about the offense. The rookie tight end looked like he was making some plays. He made some plays. We had to cut touchdown pass. He uh, struggled. Uh, he, he had the bad penalty at the end. Yeah, his blocking hasn't been as good as I, I don't understand. No, it, no was, some of his blocking is very good. He had yeah, but he part, had been mauling guys in the preseason, part, and once it went for real, that was the end of that. Well, he had a couple good mauls, but he uh, <laughs> part of their game plan was the wham, which right. is like a trap play uh, for those listening, kind of misdirection trap. They were going to wham using strange on on uh, Grover Buckner. Stewart. No, they wanted well, they to. Did, they, they, when they're one on no, Buckner, they Buckner. wanted to. Gro- they wanted to wham Grover Stewart. That was their plan. And did not work very well because Grover Stewart literally blew up strange. Yeah, Grover's like a huge guy. Isn't well, it's a good I mean, it's a good – I mean, you have to do a better didn't job. Buckner get a, didn't Buckner get a sack? Yes. Up the field. Really? I, I blame that on Trevor because Trevor started – if he just stays in the pocket, steps up, I think he, can get, he doesn't get sacked. He tried to get Correct. outside. Correct. And Buckner got him. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Grover Stewart, 6'4", 314. Yeah. And who's 93 for them? Because he's the other guy we tried Eric to wham. Johnson, 6'4", 299. Yeah, that's another guy that didn't, the wham didn't work and too Brenton well. And Brenton Strange is 6'4", 253. Yeah, it was just – it was – he's got to get lower. But, lo- again, he's gotta again, get, he he's got to get lower. Good, he hasn't been as good blocking as he was early in the preseason. When I, in the preseason, I thought he was going to be one of those all-time maulers. And he still might end up being that. But he's he's – Willing, I mean, he he does it. I mean, you're right, Tony. There's sometimes you watch him and you go, "Wow, he just cleaned out that whole side over there." But the fact that he caught the pa- caught the ball and had a little juice that that's a that was a good sign. For, no, for I me. I think Brenton Strange to be a good player. Like I think, like I like our tight ends. I like them all. Um, Every time I, I see certain things happen in, around the league, and I think about Josh Oliver could have been blocked. He's one of the better blocking tight ends in the league. They ran him off. 
Well, and Quincy Williams playing some of the best linebackers. Holy in the cow, game. is he good? He got run off too. Yeah, and then they drafted four different guys to try and replace him. <laughs> like Quincy Williams is really good, Pete, isn't he? I, I haven't seen a bunch it's of them. Unbelievable how much better he's become. I watched like the end of that because uh, it, it, the uh, CBS cut to them. Or maybe it was Fox. I can't remember which game I was watching. It cut to the end of the uh, Eagles Jets game, and that dude flies around. It's it, it's amazing. Uh, he's got, and he's much more. Remember, he used to get lost all the time. Oh, chance. lost! Oh. Looked like yeah. he was on you know out in the middle of the woods with no compass. But they gave up on him. All right, let's come back. We're gonna keep it real when we come back because we yeah. have not been doing that yet. No. Not yet. And it's about injuries. Okay. Let's do it. You seem excited. Can't wait. PRI Productions, the official event production company. The Jags has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com. It's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a whole lot more than just wings. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Swing by Mr. Chubby's and indulge in the biggest and best wings in town, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow sports fans. With plenty of game day specials and locations on the west side, Fleming Island, Ponte Vedra Beach, and new this season, Everbank Stadium, they're here for all your game day needs. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. Yucatan. Everyone wins when two great traditions team up. Yucatan guacamole is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Our authentic guacamole recipe starts with hand-scooped avocados and ends up in your hands fresh and ready to enjoy. Grab some on game day at the Yucatan Cantina or Yucatan Nacho Carts around the stadium or at local retail stores. Sack your snack game with Yucatan guacamole. Want to be up close and personal with the Jaguars as they take the field? Here's your chance to be in the shadows, outside the Jaguars locker room, now called the Vault. Enter today at jaguars.com slash shadows. One winner, a guest for every home game at Everbank Stadium. No purchase to enter or win must be 18 or older and a legal resident of Florida or Georgia. Promotion period 9523 through 12 15, 23. For official rules and complete details, visit jaguars.com. Sponsored by Jacksonville Jaguars, LLC. Ever wish you could make your Mondays go a little smoother? Here's a pro tip. Order online to dodge the line and kick off your week with free coffee Mondays. Every Monday through October 30th, Dunkin' Rewards members can get a free medium hot or iced coffee with any purchase. And you get to earn points to spend on even more free Dunkin'. Not a member? Join Dunkin' Rewards on the app and get even more Dunkin' deals. Nothing beats Dunkin' Rewards. Jaguars run on Dunkin'. Limit one per member per Monday. Additional charges and terms may apply. Exclusions may apply. Participation may vary. Limited time off. Brooks Rehabilitation is hiring nurses who want to be empowered as advocates, educators, care coordinators, and leaders in exceptional patient care. They have open RN, LPN, HHA, and CNA positions across their inpatient, skilled nursing, and home health care settings. Join their nationally recognized team, where you'll serve as a central team member doing what you do best, providing exceptional patient care. Apply at careers.brooksrehab.org. Crown Royals, that deserves a crown program, recognizes local heroes for making a positive impact in the community. The Jaguars and Crown Royals are giving back to those who serve this season, celebrating these individuals with the ultimate VIP Jaguars home game experience. Nominate someone who deserves a crown today at jaguars.com slash crown royal promotion. Please drink responsibly. I started with a uh, film study, you know, that was a that was a formation based, you know, pass formation. They wanted to make it seem like it was run, but from the film study that we had on them guys, you know, I took a shot and you know I made the right call. It's Josh Allen on the sack fumble yesterday. Welcome back. It is Jaguars Happy Hour. JP Shadrick, Tony Baselli in Jacksonville. Pete Prisco down in South Florida. Get ready for the tailgate with Tony. Benefiting the Baselli Foundation is coming up Sunday. Yes. November 19th at Metropolitan Park. 
ahead of the Titans-Jaguars game, 10 a.m. to 12.30. Aren't you busy in that time? Yeah, I'm going to be out there until about uh, 11.45. Live music, Q&A. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do, our, I'm gonna do a hit from out there. Uh, oh, oh, great. Q&A with you. Yes, Q&A. And some Jaguars legends. You legends. To be named. To be named later. Uh, all-inclusive ticket options are available. Visit. Food, drink, music. Yeah. Get ready to go beat the... You know what out of the Titans. You can visit uh, BaselliFoundation.com for more. And that uh, should be fun. Be a party. It, it will be a party. There's no doubt about that. There is a, uh, a code you can use for $50 off. The uh, code don't, is... Don't give that out. It's all the money goes to the foundation. I was told I could. Oh, okay, go ahead. Do it then. $50 off if you use the code TONY50. TONY50. I wonder why. It's, okay. You're getting some legends at the thing, huh, Tony? Yeah, Pete, you want to come up for it? I would love to, but I got to work that day. Nah, you're not really working. We know that'd that. be fun. You, you, I love I love to see the old guys, man. Yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. All the money goes to the foundation, which is uh, uh, we have a teacher fellowship program working with teachers right here on the first coast. Uh, we have three year fellowship program, and then we uh, do mentoring for young men in juvenile delinquent uh, de- in juvenile delinqu no juvenile detention center sorry <laughs> uh, juvenile detention centers who are either in it or just getting out very nice yeah that's so good. good yeah that's awesome very nice you guys have been doing that for a long time too right uh, the foundation started in 1995 that's a long time it's a long that time that would qualify you were a young man then tony i was 23 years of age you were 23 in 1985 1995 yeah 23 damn yeah, I was 35. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I won't 50, t- 51 now. I won't tell you how old I was in 1990. How old were you in 95 out of Let's curiosity? Uh, I would have been uh, 14. Wow. Yeah. You were mm-hmm. just starting to get that little twinkle in your eye looking at the, the girls in your class. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm not touching that Junior one. high school. I'm not touching that one. Uh, time for Keeping It yes, Real, presented it. by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. And it has to do with the Jaguars' injuries and your concern level. Let's use the DEFCON system as a gauge today. DEFCON 5 is not really concerned. DEFCON 4 is above that. DEFCON 3 is, okay, we're getting ready for something. DEFCON 2 is, we're one step away. And then DEFCON 1 was, we're in it, and we got to make some moves and do some things. This That's is the, the injuries. This is the injuries. With all the injuries right now for the Jaguars, DEFCON level of concern for you. Five is lowest. One is the most concerned. Um, I'm assuming that Trevor's fine. Because if Trevor's not fine, it's DEFCON 1. I mean, it's like... Right. <laughs> I mean, so I'm assuming he's fine, and I'm going to put it at DEFCOM 4. Right, not too concerned. Not too concerned. No, because Little will be back. Everyone on Zay that Jones list is coming back. back. Right. Not, yeah, not it, done it, for the year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a four. It's definitely a four. Okay. If Trevor's missing time. Mm, it's a one or two. It's a one or two, particularly with the games coming up. Yeah. Now, I mean, if it's a one, in theory, you're making moves to get somebody in to fill some of the You're not going to go make a move for quarterback. No, but not that, but the other positions, right? When I think of DEFCON 1, it's like, yeah, maybe go get somebody. You only have two weeks to do that because the trade deadline's over the 31st. I'm thinking more in the context of like, yeah, pretty much what we were hoping for this year is not going to (laughs) happen. So if if you go individually, JP, Trevor's like a DEFCON 4. I mean, uh, right, right yeah. now. Yeah. Zay Jones is a DefCon five. You're not. Re- he'll be back. Yep. Walker Little. Walker Little will be back in a couple of weeks. Sheriff. Um, Sheriff will be back. So none of them are that concerning. The collection unless of them, Trevor's, though. Yeah, but the, the, I mean, the collection for about Trevor. Right. The collection for this week. Yes. Is a little bit more concerning. Maybe it gets to a three. But the reality is the longest injury on that list is most likely Tyson Campbell's with the hamstring because soft tissue. That's the one. Like, if you read all those injuries, again, assuming Trevor's fine, which I believe he is, um, all those injuries, like the mo- most concerning, the unknown is Tyson because soft tissue hammies in, in a position like corner, you just don't know. Those things can how do linger. They, how do they play that this week? Because – do, how, who starts over there? We'll save that. We've got a Fanatics fan question yeah, about know. that. We'll get to that coming up in just a little bit. 
tease. That's yeah, a tease. Yeah, that's a tease. We don't want to ruin the uh, surprise. Uh, that, by the way, was Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients Award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. Hey, speaking of the injuries, if they, for some reason, get Devon Hamilton back, what would that do for the defensive line? Uh, depth. I mean, I mean, if he gets back to the level that he was in the preseason, during, I mean, in camp, he was their best defensive lineman. I mean, yeah. It gives more than just depth. It gives him a, another power player in there. They're already pretty good against the run. And yeah, but you get a big back. body like that, and yeah. he, he I, I think then they can be really good against the really special against the run. If you get him back in there and he's playing like he was before the back injury, and you have Fadakasi, who's healthy, it looks like, finally. Remember, because he was banged up all last year. And then Roy Roberts and Harris should play every game like he has Quentin Nelson across from him. <laughs> and those linebackers start running the way, even the way Lloyd's running right now, because he played fast on Sunday. Yeah. All of a sudden, you have the makings of a triangle in there that's going to make it hard to run the football. Well, it already is hard to run the football. But I mean, even you know what I mean. Yeah, really, yeah, even Tony, more like, difficult. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, they're doing a good job against the run so far. It's time to check yes to see country music legend George Strait with Chris Stapleton and Little Big Town, May eleventh, twenty twenty four, at Everbank Stadium. Get your tickets ahead of the general public. Venue presale starts Tuesday, October seventeenth. That's tomorrow. Wow. When che- is the concert? Uh, May eleventh, twenty twenty four. Okay. Check yes at EverbankStadium.com and get your special presale code. Uh, Tony, will you have a box for that? Do you get that with the gold jacket? Like, how does that work? What is the normal protocol? Um, it does not come with the gold jacket that I know of. I would welcome it if it did, because I'm a big country music fan, as you know. Um, I'll be making some phone calls to some of the uh, some people I know. Remember your boy. Yes, I will. Thanks. Never forget. Pete, you, you want to come up for it? Pete doesn't even like country. Pete's not even listening. He gave up. He quit. Fanatics fan questions next. This Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a whole lot more than just wings. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Swing by Mr. Chubby's and indulge in the biggest and best wings in town, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow sports fans. With plenty of game day specials and locations on the west side, Fleming Island, Ponte Vedra Beach, and new this season, Everbank Stadium, they're here for all your game day needs. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. It's football season, and time to take your game to the next level with a Ford F-150 truck. Light up your tailgate with an available Pro Power onboard generator, and with an available 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine, you can tow just about anything you need to rule the stadium lot. Ford F-150, part of the F-Series lineup that have been the best-selling pickups for 46 straight years. Get to your local Ford store today. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing MyGate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gate's frequent shopper clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the MyGate Rewards app in the App Store today or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to gate. Brooks Rehabilitation has more than 50 years of experience serving the North Florida community with cutting-edge rehabilitation care, ranging from joint replacements, sports injuries, and balance issues to traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, and strokes. Their highly trained clinical teams span across their system of care to include inpatient, outpatient, skilled nursing, assisted living and memory care, home health, and adaptive community programs. Learn more at brooksrehab.org. Brooks is proud to be the rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. As the official supermarket of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Publix is helping fans gear up for game day with the limited time Jaguar sub. Piled high with hot deli chicken tenders, boar's head bacon, cheddar cheese, coleslaw, and barbecue mayonnaise on a white sub roll. The Jaguar sub is an easy, delicious meal for any fan. Make it an ultimate game day by ordering the Jaguar sub online for in-store pickup. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. 
Are you ready to elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans? Citrus Distillers, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is excited to announce the 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Now available at Total Wine and other participating retailers. Elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans. The 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Duval! Part on us, part on players, right? I mean, we, we put our players in situations where we have to know, understand the situation. So, um, you know, we talked about taking the short sack in a situation like that. If you don't feel like you can get outside, you just you, you go down. And, you know, so part of that's on the player. And then we can coach that better. We can emphasize that more. But the play call, I'm, I'm 100% you know, behind the play call. It's it's something that uh, a lot of teams do in situations like that to get the quarterback on the edge. You know, they're they're defensively they're they're pinching gaps and they're they're edge pressures and it's a good way of getting your quarterback on the perimeter to, to get the first down and, and pretty much ice the game at that point. But um, and then again, as coaches too, we can instruct our quarterback better, uh, coach him better and understand that if you can't get outside just just go down. That's the head coach, Doug Peterson, today on the play call late in the game. Trevor Lawrence dinged his knee up on that play. Jaguars got the win yesterday over the Colts, though, and Jaguars happy hour continues. The second hour is presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings, J.P. Shadrick, Tony Baselli here in Jacksonville at the yes. Miller Electric Center. Yes, we are here. In person. It's great to see you, Tony. Uh, Pete Prisco is down in South Florida. It's also great to see you virtually, Pete. Always good to see you. You're looking good, Pete. Um, Hey, Pete, I got – so we hotly debated this in the first hour. Hotly. Um, And you and I disagree. You think it was – I think I'm going to quote you a stupid brain-dead call um, to quote (laughs) Pete Prisco. Yeah, that's – you're right. You're right. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what you said. Um, I was okay with it. Pete, would you have been okay with it if the play was called and as soon as Trevor saw those guys come up the field, just fell down, took a knee? There's no reason to call the I'm, play. I, I admit you're, you didn't answer the question, Pete. Would no, you been a, you're, no, you're a liar. I would not have. You would, it would have never come up, and you would never have said that's a bad well, call if you had taken a knee and fallen <laughs> down ever. And if it would have no, worked, not, you'd have been like, that's genius. Winner Baselli no, on this debate. No need for it to work. He the can't answer, JP. <laughs> no need. Decide. What's working? What, Tony, what's the end? Decide, JP. Who won? Go ahead, what's Pete. the end game of that of that play working? Tell me. You just said if it works. What's first down. Work? What? First down. What? First down. What if it do works, need they get a first for? down. First down. What take, do you need it for? To milk the clock. What do you need the first down for? Milk the clock. You don't, they said to milk the clock. Milk the clock because here's the thing. Pete, you don't know. <laughs> what if – what if, They're okay. up three scores with three minutes left and they have no timeouts. They're up two. What if they what – if they, what if they, uh, what's a – what, 17, would it not? If, if they, they, if the they make it. It's not 100% you're going to make it. What if it gets <laughs> blocked? Get what if it gets blocked? What if get it gets bigger. blocked? What if it gets blocked? We've already had one block this year. Oh, my God. Your your defense of that call is ridiculous. And the fact is, I can see your face that you are not. You don't even believe what you're I saying. Believe it. So big. I believe no, it. I believe it. you don't. You, you can't Look, see. You, put, you obviously are blind. I got to I gotta tell you, I'm – hey, would... We should be able to put a poll up for the fans on Twitter <sighs> I, and whew. say, who do you – who do you agree with, Pete or Tony? I guarantee you every single one of them would agree with me. Yeah, because they're all reacting to him getting hurt, not the play call. The, well, the play call is the reason he got hurt. That's not Turn true. The ball off, kick your Doug field goal. just said it. If they did a better job of coaching and reminding him, and if he did a better job of understanding the situation. Put him just... in that situation. What if he twisted to go out and he pulled and he tore his knee up because he's what trying if he to. Tr- what if he trips on the blade of grass, go to the sideline, and hurts himself? Oh. Oh, Stop, oh. Pete. You're ridiculous. You know, and, and and ETN, like you said, shouldn't have been in there taking handoffs either. I agree with that. Who Would won? you agree if it's 17 points and two and a half minutes left and no timeouts that the game's over? Yes, but they at that point okay. it was a four, at that point it was a 14 point game. It wasn't 17. Right. But if you hand off, they run run the clock, kick your field goal, the game's over. What if they block it, turn it for a touchdown? And you're up 14 points. No, no. You're up seven at that point. They block okay. it, return it. Okay. In any way, shape, or form, is any one of those scenarios worse than your quarterback getting his knee twisted? 
It, there's the knee, is the quarterback twisting his knee <laughs> oh, if he I takes a knee? You got him on that one, Pete. If he <laughs> takes a knee, no. He stumbled. If, I'm responding what Doug said. No, if they I did asked, a better I job. The question, is them blocking the field goal and returning it for a touchdown worse than the quarterback getting his knee twisted and maybe not playing on Thursday night? And I will say this. You can't I mean, answer that question. I can't. I did answer it. I'm Game answering. Over. I'm what Doug said. I'm with Doug on this. Doug said mm-hmm. they should have done a better job as coaches to coach him up better. To, if if there's rushes in your face, coach fall down. Coach him up to hand the ball off. I mean, there's more of a chance of them blocking a 51-yard field goal attempt than there is a, what, 34-yard attempt that would have been, right? If uh, he 19, can't make the 24 yard field goal. Okay, yeah. let's just play the worst. Or 37, 37. The worst-case scenario is they don't get the first down by running the ball. He goes out, he kicks the field goal, they block it and return it. Is that worse than the quarterback, franchise quarterback, having his knee twisted and maybe not playing on Thursday? Pete, you're missing my point. I'm <laughs> responding the, the, to what Doug Peterson said. God, I should have been an attorney because I abused the witness. Oof. That's not true. You're you're not abusing anyone. You're just like all your. You want to you answer my question? I did answer your question. Okay, what, is is his? Is, is the worst case scenario in that game. Your question kick, isn't relevant to my point. It is relevant. Maybe if you watched more law shows, you'd be, there'd be an objection <laughs> and you'd be thrown out of court for introducing <laughs> See, he started screaming testimony. He <laughs> you're, inter- uh, you're introducing evidence that is not relevant to the conversation. Do they still the show Matlock, scenario, by the way? The worst scenario of all of it is he misses time because they called that play. That's the worst You know scenario. who you remind me of right now? Who's oh. that? The lawyer on My Cousin Vinny. No. Yeah. That's who you look like. That's who you are. The... No. I, I'm the, Pick so, the greatest lawyer of out. all time because I'm, spit it I'm out, abusing you. No, I'm you're not. I'm abusing you. Hmm. Worst case scenario is he doesn't play on Thursday. Worst of all of them. Or or if it was worse and he missed three to four weeks. Vincent Gambini is who you're thinking of. That was his uh, real name and um, okay, my good. cousin Vinny. Yeah, I couldn't think that of was, it. That uh, was Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Course, played the part. Yeah, Joe Pesci. He had like three different names yeah. during the movie. <laughs> and a bunch of names. Yeah, that's, that's kind Great of movie, by the way. Great movie. It's on Look, all the time. See, he's, he's getting off on the beat. He's I'm not. You entered. I abused him. Pete. Let's, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say this who one last time. This is it. This is the final point. Final thing. Right here. All I'm saying, your question is not relevant. My point <laughs> was that what I agree with what Doug said. If it was executed better and coached better, where if the rushers come at the field, he fell down, it would have been about a five-yard, six-yard loss, and we wouldn't be talking about this, and they would have kicked the field goal. Can I have the final word? Yes. Okay. Please. If the play isn't called, you don't have to put him in a spot where he has to make the damn decision. And the other part of that is, I go back to the worst case scenario, is he's going to miss time. The worst case scenario is, it, the, your scenario is they block the field goal and return it and make it a seven-point game. Oh, boy, is that worse than the quarterback having his knee messed up? No. I win. The two Utes may or may not play on uh, Thursday night football. Let's get to the Fanatics fan questions. Jaguars fans, gear up at Fanatics.com with all latest Jag styles. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com officially licensed everything. We put the cat signal out on X today. Here's the best we've come up with. Maybe. At Duval Gator, ETN leads the league in carries. I'm worried they're running him too much and may use him up before the playoffs start. Would you like to see Johnson or Bigsby get more carries and yes. keep them as fresh as possible? Yes. We already talked yes. about this. Yes. We're in agreement. Yes. Great question Absolutely. from Duval 100%. Gator. Um, very astute of understanding the game and the situation. I would agree 100% with him. Yes, 100%. Play- they calling the playoffs already. Oh, we're going. Come on. At next uh, next question, at Britt Jag, what percentage does Trevor Lawrence need to be at for him to play? And if he's not close to 100, do you risk him on a short week behind a beat-up offensive line? Nobody's 100% in this league at this time. If Trevor, if, if he's cleared medically, he plays. It's a, it's a simple I'm, it's, I'm with you. It's as simple as that. Don't give me – this whole percentages, and is he 50%, 70%, 80%, 90%, uh, who knows? How do you measure that? 
Right. Like, I don't understand what that means. You play. If you're medically cleared, you play. I'm about 81.3. You don't know. You're not even that. You're like 27%. I don't know my body. Deshaun Watson and get cleared and don't play. That's an interesting story right there. Yeah, what's that about? That's a whole nother show. That that's a, our personal podcast. We could I could unload on that's that. That's the one. after show. Me too. But I'm going to leave it alone. Keep hmm. going. We have better things to talk about. That's great. Uh, at totally Chad, if Campbell is out on Thursday, who do you put opposite of Darius Williams? Do you put Herndon outside and start Johnson at nickel corner, or put Johnson outside? Antonio Johnson, rookie safety. Yeah, I don't. By th- Trey. You're, you're not going to put on Antonio Johnson out there. I would. No prob- way. I would. I would put Trey Herndon out there and then kick Herndon back into nickel and maybe a Montero during nick during nickel. Or one scenario, if they're comfortable with Antonio Johnson playing corner, I mean, excuse me, nickel after being out as long as he was, and the fact that he is a rookie and nickel's a tough position, and Trey's a heck of a blitzer and does so many good things in the run. If they're confident, then maybe put Trey outside uh, and Johnson inside. But I would probably go start with Trey, Darius Williams, and you know, and regular personnel. Go to nickel, kick Trey down, and bring Montaric Brown to and, the outside. And 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 Brown, in fairness to him, he was thrown into it on yeah. on side, but he didn't play very well. Yeah. Okay. I, I I can't disagree with that, Pete. But I think that's what I would do. I, I you know, Antonio are, are Johnson. There any other options? There's no other options. Yeah. There? I, not that I know of. Antonio Johnson is not gonna. I would not play him outside corner. As a no. Starter. Heck no. He's not. A, he's not an outside. No. Corner. Now, if you have confidence, do you roll him in there on some nickel? Possibly. But Trey's really good at nickel. Why do you want to weaken that spot? Weren't they thinking about using him as a nickel when he, if he had been healthy to start the season? Yeah, uh, if he, but he didn't yeah. win the job, and Trey is playing well in this style of defense. Well, and Antonio, what are their other options if they could go to that? Is, uh, I mean, you could bring in another safety, a winger, Daniel Thomas. Somebody has to play corner, and none of those guys right. are playing I'm corner. I'm talking about a nickel, though, yeah. like big nickel kind of deal. Yeah, but no, I mean, Antonio Johnson, no. I mean, no. So Johnson is probably the option. But that's why I, if it was me, and these guys, I mean, listen, um, my call will notice this personnel way better than I do. Just watching, and because I I always worry about weakening two positions. Well, here's like, another because if you have I mean Trey's playing good nickel. He's a great yeah. blitzer, good in run defense. But here's the thing. Here's player. the thing against against the Saints. You could put Antonio Johnson on Michael Thomas. You I don't you, but you but I think Pete, the other they're, guys they're, like they're, Shahid, those little quick guys that give him some problems. But Pete, they're playing. Know? They're playing, and I don't know the exact percentage. I bet you they're playing 75, 80% zone. You're not putting yeah, anyone on anybody. I know. Hey, by the way, the, the Jags did sign a corner back to the practice squad today. Who? Amani Aruwarie, I believe is how you say it. Yes. Wait, wait, you really Play got that the out well. Yeah. Then he was, he was with the Giants practice squad, right? The Jags yeah. also have Tavon Campbell in the practice squad at corner. They've got Eric Hallett the second, a rookie at corner on the practice squad. Yeah. Who's the other active corner beside? Uh, they have um, it's. Well, they put. Much. Well, they put. Um, they put one on uh, reserve list. Uh, Christian Braswell's on Braswell. reserve list. Yeah, yeah. He got dinged up. But and he might have been an option to play. But the not nickel. not anymore. No. <laughs> but yeah, they, that's a problem. Hey, um, yeah. I mean, look. If Brown, in fairness to him, he got thrown in there. He probably, you know what I mean. It's a little different scenario when you know you're actually going to start the game. I think. Yeah, I, I'm on the record. Herndon starts outside. Monteric Brown comes in at nickel to the That's outside corner probably, and kick down yeah. Herndon into nickel. Let the record reflect. Are we still in the courtroom? Yes. It sounds like you need the I rest my case court Your reporter Honor. to type it out on, for you. He was on trial. He took the stand in his own defense, and now he's going to jail for about eight years. I rest my case, Your Honor. Next question at Reno Hightower 21. Bigger need O-line depth or pass rush depth? Oh, boy. For what? The trade deadline? I think in general. They all want, they all want the Neil Hunter. I know you never can have enough pass rushers on your team. Neil Hunter tied for the league leading sacks, by the way. Yes, yeah, he but is. The, the, I mean the Vikings—they lose again this week. I mean the season's over. And they play the—they play the Niners this week. Yeah, and the season's over, and they can't franchise them. And Neil Hunter is going to go somewhere else. So why not get some what trade value? Up, for him? What do you give up for him? Uh, fourth, fifth. Does, is it rental? That's going to get it. Well, I mean, I mean anything more, Pete? Then you have to—you have to have plans to sign him. Right, I would for a rental. I'd give up. I'd give up a four for him. That's what I just said. Four, four or yeah. five. 
I just don't think the Vikings would take that. I think they get a better offer somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, somebody probably would give him maybe a, a two or a three, knowing that they're going to try to sign him to a long-term deal. I mean, he's a, <laughs> can you imagine, imagine if you traded away the sack leader and got a four for him? No, I don't think it's going to happen either, Pete. To your point, my but no. I don't. I'd be surprised if the Jags go and trade a second or third for Daniil Hunter, because you're basically sending the message that we're, we're going to we need to sign him. And this is the the risk, Pete, and you know this. You trade a high pick, first, second rounder, maybe a third, but first or second for sure for a player during the season whose contract's up, guess who has all the leverage at that mm-hmm. point? You got that right, and it ain't the team. Well, here, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. We You talk about a third or a second. If The third goes for Ridley, right, if he reaches his numbers. And if they sign him to an extension, it goes to, that becomes their the second. Second, correct. So there's a problem with trading those. Yeah, there's all kinds of – that's why I don't think it probably happens. But unless you, want, unless you want to trade a 2025 pick for him, you know. Yeah, but second. again, it, it depends. Are you planning on signing him? Well, I mean, if, <laughs> I would think – yeah, you can't sign him and Josh Allen, no. that's for sure. No. no. One last question at Celos underscore Santana. I think this is really the Carlos Santana. No, I don't know if it is. Can we beat the Saints even if Little Sheriff Campbell, Zay Jones, and Lawrence are all out? Yeah, yeah man, anything can happen on the football field. Um, yeah, that, that, their offense isn't very. Like Tony said, they're not very good. Their car looks like he's struggling. Well, let's just be clear. Little's not playing. Campbell's not. I don't think he's going to play. I mean, I mean, my guess is Little, Campbell, and Zay are not going to play. I think Sheriff gives a go. The question is, will they let him? Will they let him? Tough guy. Not that those other guys aren't tough, just different injuries. And I think Lawrence is going, so I don't think it. But if Lawrence, I mean, if Lawrence doesn't play, it's an uphill battle. Nothing against C.J. Beathard, but he's the backup for a reason, and it changes how you can play. Now, can C.J. Hey, can C.J. get you through a game? Yes, but it's right. it's a much it's a much steeper hill to climb with him at quarterback than Trevor. Hey, one, you didn't get to this question. This really happened. This didn't happen. What is the collective Jaguars happy hour response on being called out directly by the announcers calling Josh Allen game record during the TV broadcast? Did mm. that happen? I don't, I I don't watch the TV broadcast. I didn't, so hear, it. I didn't hear it either. I didn't hear it. Did they call us out or did they call? Were they, uh, I don't know about that. That'd be great if we made national. Yeah. This is our big break. Spiro and Arch got us. Um, Josh is playing great football. He's playing outstanding football. He's making a boatload of money. Happy for him. I like, um, I'm like, I'll just, I, I'm the biggest. I'll take, I'll take my three percent. You take your three percent for uh, <laughs> motivating him. It's a discount. I, in, we played a clip earlier, and um, if you're just joining us, you might have missed it. Where they interviewed Josh Allen, and he, and he was talking about his stat, uh, his sack. It was a first down sack. Mm-hmm. They were in run personnel, run, you know, you know, basically first down and. What Josh had said, and I knew this, I know this about Josh, just um, have, talking to him and everything else. He is a vor- voracious uh, film studier. And he said through his film study, and obviously with coaches and on his own and everything else, he knew that the tip was in that personnel grouping and that formation that they throw the ball. And so on first down, we're typically you're kind of playing, running, you know, playing the run, reacting to the pass. He put a full pass rush move, got the edge, bent the corner, put a great speed rip rush, and got the sack fumble. And so it's what I like about hearing that, and I knew it about him, is it's not just about it being a great athlete. He is learning, and he's becoming a – and I, he's been a true pro, so I don't want to say it's all of a sudden. But that just gives you a little bit of an insight, a little behind-the-scenes look that this guy is spending a lot of time on the mental – side of the game of understanding what they're presenting to them to him and how can he take advantage of that and i i just loved that clip i loved how he talked about it and that's the type of guys you want on your team it's important you know what else you know what else he's having his best year he's playing his best football it just goes to show you how important those otas are to being a good football player he wasn't around at all was he <laughs> Pete, let's, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs>
Kick off the second half of the season at the bank when the Jaguars take on the San Francisco 49ers Sunday, November 12th. Kickoff set for 1 o'clock p.m. for now, at least. And tickets are going fast. Secure your seats. Go to jaguars.com slash tickets. See you there at the bank. By the way, Week 10 Sunday night football, just for the record, let the record reflect, Sunday night football is Jets at Raiders that week. Oh, oh, turn Tony's back on real quick. Yeah, I think that game gets flexed. The, Jets, the Niners, Jack. No, I think well, they, I think, they flex out. Yeah, of but the, and I think it's either us and the uh, Niners, or I think it's Chargers, Detroit. Very interesting. A few weeks away, a lot of football left between now and then. We'll go around the NFL and close it out when we come back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by Mister Chubby's Wings. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a whole lot more than just wings. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Swing by Mr. Chubby's and indulge in the biggest and best wings in town, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow sports fans. With plenty of game day specials and locations on the west side, Fleming Island, Ponte Vitra Beach, and new this season, Everbank Stadium, they're here for all your game day needs. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. It's football season, and time to take your game to the next level with a Ford F-150 truck. Light up your tailgate with an available Pro Power onboard generator. And with an available 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine, you can tow just about anything you need to rule the stadium lot. Ford F-150, part of the F-Series lineup that have been the best-selling pickups for 46 straight years. Get to your local Ford store today. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brooks Rehabilitation is hiring nurses who want to be empowered as advocates, educators, care coordinators, and leaders in exceptional patient care. They have open RN, LPN, HHA, and CNA positions across their inpatient, skilled nursing, and home health care settings. Join their nationally recognized team, where you'll serve as a central team member doing what you do best, providing exceptional patient care. Apply at careers.brooksrehab.org. Ever wish you could make your Mondays go a little smoother? Here's a pro tip. Order online to dodge the line and kick off your week with free coffee Mondays. Every Monday through October 30th, Dunkin' Rewards members can get a free medium hot or iced coffee with any purchase. And you get to earn points to spend on even more free Dunkin'. Not a member? Join Dunkin' Rewards on the app and get even more Dunkin' deals. Nothing beats Dunkin' Rewards. Jaguars run on Dunkin'. Limit one per member per Monday. Additional charges and terms may apply. Exclusions may apply. Participation may vary. Limited time off. The kick is up. It's good! Score winning sub deals this Jaguars regular season at Firehouse Subs. Get two medium subs for just $10 after any game with the Jaguars kick a field goal of 40 yards or more. It's a bold deal for the bold city. Sign up at firehousesubs.com slash field goals for Firehouse for offer details and to automatically receive this offer when you use your Firehouse Subs rewards account. Redeemable only at participating Jacksonville and Orlando area restaurants. Only available on the Firehouse Subs app and online ordering. Welcome back. It is Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Mr. Chubby's Wings from the Hyundai Studios at the Miller Electric Center. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Buscelli, and Pete Prisco after a Jaguars win. Three in a row. Four and two Jaguars visiting the three and three Saints this Thursday at the Superdome in New Orleans. For 10 years, Dream Finders Homes has been proud to call themselves the official home builder of the Jags. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all the available inventory and go Jags. Let's take a look around the National Football League. Some highlights yesterday. Commanders over the Falcons 24-16. I just saw, uh, Pete, um, a, a video of Arthur Smith like putting his hands on his head after a play. What happened? What was the deal with that? It was a pick by oh, Ritter. It might have been the Ritter. It, it was the Ritter interception they, at the end. They had, they had the illegal procedure penalty 
on the goal line on a on a short yardage situation, <laughs> they would have tied. Could have had to tie the game. I think that's what it was. E, no good. Not good at all. No, uh, it was a delay of game, is what it was. I'm sorry, delay of game. That's even worse. Yes. Well, they're equally bad, I suppose. Um, Vikings over the Bears, 19 to three. Bagent played in the game. He played at D2 in West Virginia last year. At Shepherd, at Shepherd College. Who is and he? he t- Tyler Bagent, and he played at Shepherd College. He's a rookie. He came in because Fields might have a broken thumb. Hmm. Wow. I mean, that was the, like one of the first times I've never heard of that guy <laughs> playing quarterback in the NFL. I've I, never heard of him. I've never heard of him either. So He's a rookie. Very rare. Uh, Bengals over the Seahawks, 17 to 13. 13. Yep. The Seahawks couldn't – they were in the red zone about 18,000 times and couldn't score. <laughs> so that's the uh, second win of the season. So the Bengals are, what, 2 and 4 now? Two no, they're 3 and 3. 3 and 3. Oh, they're right back in it. Yeah, and Joe Burrow is healthy again, and uh, yeah, they get a bye this week, and then they're back to, ready to go. Yep. Browns over the Niners, and a field goal pushed to the right by a foot at the end. Missed it. Browns win. Well, they have a rookie kicker, and they could have kept the veteran. They decided to keep the rookie, and he missed it. They didn't play very well. They have a lot of injuries, too. You talk about injuries. Trent Williams hurt. Christian McCaffrey hurt. Debo, Debo Samuel hurt. Was uh, Trent got hurt in the game? Because I know he started. I saw there was yeah, a video. Yeah, he got hurt in the game. He got thrown he had, around by Miles Garrett. He got hurt, then he got hurt again. What happened? No, what ha- what's Trent's injury? He's my favorite Foot. offensive lineman. Foot. Foot. I think it was Miles Garrett that actually lifted at him and threw him through yeah, the air. I, it's, no, he did not. I watched the play. No, what happened? It wasn't like uh, no, Reggie White no, hump move. It was. Uh, he was like trying to jump set him and run block him and and uh, Miles Garrett, who's a great player. I mean. I'm going to go back and watch that tape because I want to watch them go against each other until Trent gets hurt. He uses his body to push them, um, kind of moves them, and then it, I mean, it looks, but I'm like, no. it's Trent was, Williams is a great player. Trent Williams is a great player. And by the way, Miles Great's, Garrett's a great player, and I'm going to go watch that tape because I want to see the two of them go at it. Um, be, and I'm disappointed here Trent got hurt because I think he, he's my favorite offensive lineman that in the league that's not a Jaguar. Dolphins over the Panthers, 42-21. Panthers had a 14-0 lead. That evaporated in a hurry, and Tyreek's unbelievable. They they, they're bad, and they don't have a first-round pick. Mm. They don't have a first-round pick next year? No, they traded to Chicago for uh, – That's right, to move up. For the, and, yeah. To get Bryce Young. Yeah. So Chicago's going to have probably two top five picks next year. They might have the two one and two if, <laughs> if, if, if things work out. Can you imagine? Uh, Raiders over the Patriots, 21-17. Rams beat the Cardinals, 26-9. Hey, can we go back Raiders-Patriots? Um, sure. Pete, is Belichick the head coach at the end of the after, – after this year in New England? Well, he might not be the general manager because that team's bad. They have no talent on that team. They're not talented. And I just think about it more from a standpoint is he's like 17 games, 15 games, something like that behind uh, breaking the all-time win record that Don Shula has. Yep. I don't. Well, think. He, he's one win away from 300. Every week we go in the air, somebody says, hey, he's one win away from getting the 300. He can't, can't get it. Rams over the Cardinals, 26 to 9. Jets beat the Eagles, their first loss of the season, 20 to 14. Good football game, at least the end of it. It was fun to watch. Lions get Jalen another Hurts win. Hurts isn't playing very well. No. Ooh, no. Lions beat the Bucks, 20 to 6. They've got five wins now. And the Bills and the Giants. Well, the Giants at the goal line twice, once before halftime and once at the end, couldn't score. Well, if. If they just kick the field goal at the end of the half and run the – or, you know, if T- Tyrod Taylor doesn't check to a run and just either get a touchdown or throw incomplete and kick the field goal, all they need at the end of the game is a field goal. They played good on defense last night. They, they really sure did. did. Played very well. And the, and the Bills offense, Pete, not humming right now. No, it's not. Maybe it's the jet lag. They, man, they blamed everything. They have seriously blamed everything they possibly can. I mean, it is unbelievable. Yeah, they, they're, they're not playing well enough. It took us two straight games. And they still had 300-something yards against Jacksonville, but a lot of it came late. Yeah, it was all late. Monday night football. It's a road home game for the 3-2 and two Dallas Cowboys, who will try to get off the deck after a blowout loss last week. They visit SoFi Stadium and the 2-2 two and two LA Chargers, who won back-to-back games before their week five bye. 
Who you got tonight in Los Angeles? I'm going Chargers. It, it, I think they're gonna have to go. They're gonna have to go silent count because it'd be more Cowboy fans than Charger fans. But I think I'm not buying what the uh, Cowboys are selling. I'm going with the Cowboys. I think they write things here. Here's my belief when you play the Chargers. If you block them, you beat them. They're last in the league in pass defense. They give up 10.4 yards per completion. They're terrible against the pass. And I think the Cowboys are good enough up front, Tony, to block them. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've seen very little of both of them, so mine was a complete stab in the dark. I'd go with Pete on this one. Wow, you agree. Finally, it took the last two minutes of the show for you guys to I'm finally. I'm going to go with I mean, no, I would no lock this week, by the way. No lock until we under, see what's up. With yeah, it'd be that. irresponsible to use the lock right now. Okay, fair yeah. enough. That's uh, Pete Prisco, Tony Baselli, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber, Andrea Curry, Eric Waringa, Callie Jones, William Pease, Kate Waskey. What a full the staff. The whole crew. They're all eating Mr. Chubby's wings tonight. Save some for us. I'm J.P. Shadrick. Thanks for listening. It's Jaguars Happy Hour.